Hello everyone and welcome to Buy Bags. I'll be your reviewer for today. I'm Lonnie from Horror Heaven 77. Uh, sorry, uh, you might notice uh, I'm getting my review up just a little bit later than I normally would. Sorry guys, it's, I mean, as we all know, it's January 1st, 2021. I just want to take a second to say Happy New Year to everyone. I hope that I really do hope this is going to be a much better year than 2020 was. I hope, you know, I really hope everything will get better. I hope that, uh, I hope everybody's going to be able to, you know, with the vaccines and everything coming out, I'm really hoping that people will start to, we can come back from the flu, or not the flu, but you guys know what I'm talking about, the beer bug. We're coming, hopefully we can come back from that. Hopefully the people who are sick are going to be able to get well again. I really hope, you know, Hopefully everything will work and everybody will be able to prosper and you know, I do I really hope the best for everybody and I hope that 2021 is going to be a, a whole lot better than 2020 was so We can hope you know fingers crossed so But anyway, so yeah, so getting my review up a little bit late because uh, it's a little bit busy celebrating the new year But here we go All right, so the movie that I'm reviewing is from 2010 and I got to be honest I'm a little conflicted about this one um, you already know by the title of the video, the movie I'm talking about is 2010's Neighbor. Now, the movie stars America Olivo. Olivo? Olivo? I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. I just I just don't know exactly. And Christian Campbell, Won't You Be Mine? That tagline, when you watch the movie, the tagline doesn't exactly fit because when you read the, the box synopsis, you know, it kind of, it. well, there you go. A little eye candy for you guys. There you go. Anyway, so, <laughs> so the uh, yeah, the box synopsis doesn't really match because the way they make this movie sound, it sounds almost like it's a kind of almost like a fatal attraction kind of basic instinct kind of a film, and it's it's really not that at all. Um, the movie starts off. You have a character they just call the girl, and I'm wondering if what the point was they were trying to make her something of a Michael Myers kind of a character. I'll get into that in a minute, but, um, yeah, this woman called the girl, she's in this big, beautiful house and she's in the kitchen. She's, you know, for whatever reason, she's eating uh, frosted flakes with no milk. And, uh, so she's going through, you know, so she just, she turns on some music. She's kind of dancing through the house, goes upstairs. And then we find out that actually she's an intruder and that the man and woman, who own the house, uh, she's tied them up and she's tortured them for who knows how long. And she ended up, um, you know, the woman is dead. And the man, he's just barely clinging on to life. And she does, which, you know, makes sense for a woman who's probably, what, about 100 pounds soaking wet. Yeah, she takes uh, basically like a garden hose spigot and jams it into his heart. And then she's able to turn the spigot and blood is able to come out so she puts some into a glass and she uses the blood to paint a picture that's been there makes sense right you know that that's totally realistic but anyway um so then the uh our lady she's you know putting on her her jogging outfit she's getting ready to go for a jog it's not shown but it is very much indicated that uh in the house there's a baby so it's indicated that yes she does uh kill the baby sorry a little spoiler there but then she goes jogging through the neighborhood and the one thing that we find out is basically uh she's like going through this neighborhood and it's like a neighborhood of nice big houses and stuff like that people you know kind of a upper class neighborhood and, you know people big you know two three story houses and whatnot as she's going through these, she's kind of like going from house to house and, and she's torturing and killing people. And how the hell it is, like people in this neighborhood don't detect her or don't sense anything is wrong when their neighbors stop showing up. Uh, they don't see, you know, uh, this woman always seems like she's going in one house and she's going into another and everything else. I guess maybe, I guess the idea is when you're watching the movie, I guess you're supposed to go like, well, she's hot. So hot women can pretty much get away with anything. I guess that's what the idea that they're going for here. I don't know. But anyway, then we're introduced to our other main character, Don and Don, uh, played by Christian Campbell. Uh, he's, you know, him and his buddies, uh, Sam and Mike, they have a, you know, they got a band and they're, you know, 
uh, working, you know, working on a demo for their first album, and they're getting ready to have a party so they can play their demos, so you know people can listen to their music and see what they think of it and stuff. So uh, it turns out that uh, Don has put an ad on Craigslist to, um, you know, get a girl in to help him with the sound mixing and everything, help you know fix the wiring and all this other kind of stuff. Well, turns out that uh, uh, our friend here, the girl. You know, she finds she manages to just luck into this whole thing, and she goes and, you know, uh, and well, okay. Before we get into that, it turns out that Mike or not Mike, uh, Don, okay, he's they're sitting in a they're sitting kind of like a cafe, bar, restaurant, whatever, and they're ordering their food. Apparently, they that's kind of a ritual with these guys. They like to go to this restaurant to eat, so they go to this restaurant to eat and stuff, and. Um, you know, there's a girl there that serves drinks, and apparently he's been, he's Don has just been mooning over her for you know years now, and every, and his buddy's like, why don't you just go up and talk to her, dude, and all this stuff, and then it's well, we know you're still in love with Liz, and you want to get back with her. And it turns out that he does have an ex girlfriend named Liz, who she runs a bookstore, so he goes to see her, and they spend time together, and he helps her out in the bookstore and stuff like that, and we get a little bit of. Um, a little bit of uh, insight into these characters because they talk about how, you know, um, it's kind of hard for the two of them to be together because they're always fighting all the time. And, and um, he's, you know, he makes the joke like, well, we wouldn't fight if you just be a good girl and do what I say, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Really classy guy, this, this Don. But uh, so anyway, so, <sighs> so anyway, so yeah, they're, you know, him and his buddies, they're at a mixing session one night and then, uh, they they watch a movie. It turns out Mike is getting ready to get married, so the two guys are leaving. Don is taking out the trash. Well, meanwhile, while they're leaving, um, you know the girl she's walking the dog through the neighborhood, and turns out that the the dog belonged to a woman that she just killed and tortured and stuff. So all of a sudden, you know, and this is where the movie loses me. Okay, all of a sudden the woman is in Don's house. She's already got him tied up. Um, we don't, there's no build up to any of this. Uh, just all of the sudden she's in Don's house. She's got him tied up in the basement. Um, she, apparently she's drugged him. We don't even know how it doesn't show any of this stuff. So she's, you know, filling up a box with all kinds of things. You know, she's using, she's using like a handsaw and, and, you know, uh, pliers and all this other kind of stuff. She takes, you know, anything that she wants to use is like torture devices. And so she goes down and so, you know, she's, uh, you know, she's, you know, like drilling hole, like she's drilling holes into his toes and in his legs. And, you know, and uh, the, I will say the, the uh, effects are practical. They're very good. The torture scenes are very squirm inducing. They do look pretty, you know, they do look pretty intense and pretty gruesome. So I will say that. Um, but then we get into this whole weird quasi thing of, at some point, Sam comes over to the house and he gets wise onto the girl and and they fight and he pours acid on her and she burns up and then uh, then it turns out that he's that uh, uh, Dawn is recovered that now he and um, he and Liz they're in a relationship and and it's basically kind of like him dealing with the kind of like, you know sort of like PTSD and then. Um, you know, but he's still having these haunting visions of the girl and, and she's like showing up in his mind and everything else and, and killing people in his mind and all the. And I thought at first what they were going to go for was it was going to turn out that maybe she was some kind of a subconscious thing or something like that. And that he was the one who was that Don was actually the one who was killing people all this time. But it never goes in that direction. And then, you know, it's like, uh they they go to Mike's wedding and, and all this other kind of stuff and the two of them are to, and Liz is with is with Don and then all of a sudden we go back and it's like now all this he's back in the it's like was it a dream the movie doesn't make it very clear was it was the whole thing about him being with Liz and was that a dream was it I don't know the movie doesn't make it very clear to me you know so um, anyway then we turn out that. Uh, yeah, she's still torturing him and everything else. And uh, the the feminists and Me Too women are going to love theirs. There's a nice scene of uh, penis mutilation you're going to love in here. So 
Uh, but, ah, uh, then anyway, it's like, you know, then basically the rest of the movie ends up with the rest of your characters, Sam, Mike, Liz, everybody just ends up basically becoming lambs to the slaughter. Like just one character comes in and, you know, the girl, she, she, uh, tortures them and dispatches of them, tortures them, dispatches of them, all this other kind of stuff. And then basically, you know, you got to have the showdown between um, Don and the girl, who's going to win and everything else. And so, but, okay, overall, like I said, this movie I really had a tough time with because, you know, like I said, the movie doesn't make a lot of sense. It really doesn't. Um, I, you know, I mean, I hate to say that, but you know, I hate to say it, but just to me personally, the movie felt kind of condescending in the sense that it's like, it feels like, okay, this is a movie like, we're going to give you a lot of gore, we're going to give you a lot of practical effects, we're going to give you a lot of torture and everything else, so you don't need coherent storytelling, you don't really need a lot of character development, you don't need, you know, um, you know, a plot that really makes sense, um, you know, and okay, and another thing I will say, if you're the kind of, uh, if you're the kind of person who watches the original Halloween and you don't like the explanation that John Carpenter and Deborah Hill came up with, that Michael Myers is essentially the boogeyman, he's ultimate evil in the shape of a person, if you don't like that and you much prefer Rob Zombie's definition of Michael Myers in, in his remake, yeah, you're not going to like, uh, yeah, if you didn't like John Carpenter's explanation of Michael Myers, you're not going to like this because it doesn't explain, you know, anything about the, the girl. We don't get a lot of insight into her character. We don't, you know, there's no real reason why she's doing this. Oh, I forgot to mention, there's a there's a fun little scene with uh, her and Mink Stoll, who, you know, everybody remembers from uh, John Waters films. But overall, just, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, I mean, if you're just into kind of like the August Underground, I guess, you know, uh, 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 you know, guinea pig kind of just torture movies, then yeah, you're gonna love this. You know, you're gonna love the you're gonna love the gore and the torture and all that other kind of stuff and the squirm-inducing special effects and everything else. But I will say though, it's like uh, if you're hoping for like an interesting story, like what is this? What is her character? You know, how does she go about selecting her victims? Um, uh, you know, how does she prepare and everything? You get none of that. You know, so I mean, it's not as interesting as say something like uh, Maniac. You know the original maniac or um you know uh 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 like i don't know henry porch of a serial killer or something there's no real insight into who this woman's character is what she, why is she doing the things she's doing um like i said just all of a sudden it's at some point she's in don's house she's got him tied up and she starts torturing him and there's no build up to any of it we don't know how she gets in there you know does she seduce don does she trick him we don't know it's like the movie doesn't show you all of a sudden she's in there and she starts torturing him. so that's probably the biggest complaint that i have is just you know don't expect don't expect a storyline that makes sense. Don't expect a plot that's going to make sense. Basically, like I said, she's going around and pretty much every character in this neighborhood, in these houses, is pretty much, like I said, they're lambs to the slaughter and that's pretty much it. It's just a lot of a lot of torture. So, so yeah, if you're not into the whole, you know, quote-unquote torture porn thing, yeah, I don't think this movie's going to be your cup of tea anyway. I will say as far as the acting goes, America, Olivo, Olivo, Sorry, I know I'm still pronouncing that wrong. Um, one thing I have to admit, I was really impressed by her acting in this movie. I thought she was interesting, and, and I really wanted to know a little bit more. That's one of the reasons why I have such a gripe with the fact that we know nothing about her character, because I thought she was interesting. Now, America, we've seen her, you know, we've seen her in movies where, you know, she doesn't really get a lot to do. Either she's just the hot girl that gets killed, like in the Friday the 13th remake, she gets a really brutal uh, death scene in the Friday the 13th remake where, you know, she gets naked, her and her boyfriend are having sex, and Jason ties her up in the sleeping bag, hangs her over the fire, basically she burns to death. So, you know, she gets the brutal murder scene in that. We've seen her, like, in the, you know, if you watch the Maniac remake with Elijah Wood, she played his, uh, you know, drug-addicted prostitute mother in that movie, and, and I remember, I think he ends up killing her in that movie, too, so... <clears throat> so you know she doesn't get movies where she gets a lot to do in this movie 
you know, you get it like you get this. She's not just beauty, but she does have a personality there, too. And I think it would be nice to see her in more roles where she gets more to do, you know, and the time she is, you know, she, you know, she does go run the gambit from being charming to being funny, to being sexy, to being dangerous, to being scary. You know, she kind of runs the gamut through all of those range of emotions and things. And, you know, that's the thing. It's like, I don't know if she's been doing much acting wise lately, but, um, yeah, I thought she was really good, you know, and uh, she is very much worth watching the movie for, not just because of her looks, but, you know, I think she does a good job, you know, and, and you could tell there's like, um, when you watch her act in the movie, you could tell there's a lot in there going on. There's a lot going on to the side with her, but just unfortunately, it's never addressed, you know, so. But anyway, hopefully, you know, hopefully maybe one day we'll see her in another movie where, you know, she gets to be a real character that has a real story arc and you know we can really get a sense of her talent so <clears throat> excuse me but uh, anyway yeah so starting off uh 2021 so here we go guys hopefully this will be a good year for everybody and hopefully this will definitely be a good year for body bags reviews so um if anybody took the time to watch this i thank you for doing it i appreciate you for doing it i honestly hope everybody enjoyed the video if you did, please leave it a like. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the Body Bags channel. We have a different reviewer, one for every day of the week. I'm the Friday reviewer. We have different guys. Everybody's doing different stuff. Sorry, my <clears throat> throat's getting a little dry. So, uh, everybody, take care. Have a happy new year, everybody, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.